There we go. All right. So as we got cut off there, we were just posting a new news story. So we selected both boxes so that it would appear on the home page and on our story page. So if we go back to the home page now, we'll see that our new news story is there, first in position in our scroller. I did not have to go in and edit the home page as well. It automatically knew to pull that newest feed. But Perhaps I'm just catching up on a month's worth of stories that uh, I've been remiss in posting. So now that it's in here, we see our little gray dots. That means that we can move this around. So I can drag and drop this story to be in more of the proper position of where it should have been. So depending on how slow Clever Runner is, we can refresh and see that all is now right with the world. We've got it in the number four position over here now instead. For any of you that are managing your club sites, you also have the ability to have these stories as columns instead of the scrolling method. So the order of which the news stories appear in is more important in that column structure because it very much, they're all visible at the same time, whereas this one kind of not so much. So very helpful to be able to do that. And what I often, you can remove it by the way as well, but I often tell clubs to aim for if they're really struggling with getting help in their marketing departments is to assign one person that their only job is to post new stories. Often this is helpful if it's the um, social media person, they're used to writing you know, little blurbs anyway and posting a picture on Facebook doesn't need to be any more difficult than that. People think that they need to write a novel. You don't. Really, no one's reading a novel anyway. So try to engage someone in your clubs that will just take on the stories part. They don't have to worry about the events. They don't have to worry about the content pages, just stories. And if they could do that on a regular basis, that would really help with the freshness of the site. And it also really helps Google as well, because Google wants to see content that is frequently updated. Doing a story is a really, really easy way to do that. So this module is important. Now, from here, we also want to talk about our events module. So it has its own section up here. Like all the other areas, you click on it and you get a submenu here in the gray bar. You have a few different options for this. One is recurring items. Obviously, anything that happens on any type of schedule whatsoever. Weekly meetings, of course, but this could be your golf tournament that you have every Friday in June. Uh, could be you know, something that happens once per quarter. Definitely uh, board meetings, fundraising meetings, anything like that that would happen on a schedule, you can put them on here as well. So if we click on our recurring items, see all the ones that are currently entered first, any of which can be edited by the little drop down arrow here. We also have the ability to add a new one. As you probably noticed, Club Runner kind of likes their orange buttons throughout. That usually means you can use this to add a new one. So there we go. We have our title goes in first. Then we have a description. With this source code button, you can also put in any kind of YouTube video, Google form, anything like that as well. Of course, we want to show it on the website. We can upload an image to use. So something generic like the rotary wheel, if it's a, a regular meeting or something like that. Or of course you can use posters for the event or, or something iconic. The location, you can enter in the address. You do not need to put in the latitude and longitude. The address alone is sufficient to generate a Google map for you. Then you've got your start and end date of the first instance of this event. And then you can select recurring, which gives you a whole whack of options for recurrences. Basically anything you can do in your Microsoft Outlook calendar, you can do with this as well. So select your recurrences, and after a certain number of occurrences or on a particular date. Now, this module is very helpful for anything that is 
pretty static and just keeps happening on a regular basis. If you edit one instance of it, it will update all of them. So in all of our cases where we're meeting on Zoom right now, if we ever get to meet in person again, all you need to do is update one spot for your weekly meetings and all future events will be updated at the same time. So really handy module to use. But sometimes you have one-off events. So for that, you would want to use the event planner. There's our video ready. All right, event planner. Now, we have a list of everything that is currently entered into the system. And we're going to create a new event. This one has some extra options in that you can select the type of event that it is, fundraiser, committee meeting, et cetera. Start and end date, description is the same. You can enable some basic registration, image, and because this is the district site, you can attribute which club this goes to, right? So all the clubs are included in the district as a dropdown, which you would select. If this was your club site, that will not be there. What will be there if it's your club site though, is this event chair option. This is a dropdown of all of the members within your club, if it's your club site, in this case, the district. But this creates a little contact form that protects the person's email address, but provides a method of communication. So if you are posting a golf tournament, you would want to select the chair so that potential whole sponsors could get in touch with them, but you don't wanna blast their email address out to every spammer on the internet. So that is what this does. Then we have our location information, which again, generates a Google map. And we've got some good stuff down here. So most of them are pre-selected. Uh, do you want it to show on the homepage, in the calendar, in the event list? Do you want it available in bulletins to draw from? Social media share bar is automatically um, selected for this one. And so is the map. So of course, if you want to turn any of these aspects off, you can certainly do that. If you were working on your club site, there is an added uh, menu item down here that is not selected by default, but it says, show this event on the district calendar. Now, if you obviously change that to yes, it will punt that event up onto our district calendar here. You would want to do that if it's a major event. So like a hundredth anniversary or a gala or something like that. You do not generally want to do that though, if it's just your regular meeting or you know, you're getting together for quilting or something like that. You want to keep the district calendar fairly clean. So keep in mind club events, don't do that major events do do that, okay? When you're ready, have everything filled in, click save, and it will automatically put it onto the event calendar that we've got over here. There we go. So you can see all the different things. They're categorized in pretty colors. That comes from our drop down up here of the event type, and it will automatically show up there. So. Um, also a handy little thing, if you haven't noticed on the live site of the district site and any of the club sites, you have this ability to subscribe to the calendar. This will pull into your personal calendar of choice. For me, I use Outlook for my calendar. If I subscribe to this, it will pull in all of the district events into my Outlook calendar. For me, it gives them a, their own color so that I can see the difference between my personal meetings and such and my district events. So of course that doesn't mean you have to go to all of them. It just means that you're going to stay in the loop for what's going on. So that can be a really, really helpful thing. Once you set it up once, it just does its thing. You don't need to go in and you know do it every month or anything like that. And you can unsubscribe to a calendar as well. So you're not you know, sunk if you subscribe, but it can be really, really helpful, um, especially for people who are involved in the district mobile. So, okay. I think that was everything that I wanted to cover. Do we have any questions? Uh, Melissa, I have a comment. Yes. Um, this is Joseph. One of the one of the things that I just want to uh, highlight 
is um, if you have an event, um, the end date is important if you're working with a venue where you need to provide food or something, you because it automatically generates it on the day. So when you when you fill this out, uh, automatically generates it on the time when, when the event is. So it ends at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. You want to adjust it to make sure that maybe you want to give yourself a day or day and a half, depends who you're working with, to say, okay, it closed on that day to give me the number so I know to go and talk to the restaurant. So right. that's the only thing I wanted to add. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is an added, just one moment, I did see the hand there. there. There is an added event module called My Event Runner that might be, yeah, I know. Yeah, I get the same face when I use it. Um, that might be better for your, you know, RSVPing and all that kind of thing when you need numbers, but it's archaic and horrible to work with. And um, Club Runner, apparently that's what they're working on fixing right now and replacing, but it's not there yet. So, fingers crossed. And the databases don't merge yet. No, no, it's, it's free terrible. No. <laughs> okay, yes. Question on photos especially the ones that we want to put at the top of our pages, okay? Particularly on the, the homepage that we've got. How do you make them so that they fit? When we've got a whole bunch of square photos, how do you figure out to get them to that link? Well, that's, that's the challenging part. So I use Photoshop. Wow. There are free uh, photo editing softwares out there. Most computers come with some version of photo that you can just do the, the basic cropping for. Um, so you do have to do that ahead of time. There is nothing inherent in Club Runner that will do that. Uh, okay. If you're used to working with WordPress, you know that you can do it from the media library. It's very handy. Not so much with Club Runner. Okay. Um, so yeah, I edit them ahead of time. Okay. Um, you want a fairly good quality photo. Mm -hmm. So 72, BPI resolution is absolutely fine for web, but you want it to be at least 1980 pixels wide. So your photo that's this big that you're trying to blow up to this space is going to look all greeny because it's simply not big enough. So start bigger, crop it, and then put it in. And 1080 long is it? Uh, 1980 wide. Wide, and how long? How long? Uh, the height can adjust to whatever you really want it to be because okay. it's just going to fill up the space and adjust. I okay. like to keep them, it depends on uh, the club, but I like to keep them around three to 400 max for those okay. header images because you don't want people scrolling too much. Okay. Yeah. Now it can be a challenge to get just the right crop of, you know, all people's heads and such, but. Gotcha. Okay, good. That'll help out. Mm -hmm. So it's basically uh, fix them up before they go in. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. That okay. may change in the future, but I, I don't think it's on their radar right now. Okay. Good enough, because I, I do, we do want to put some of our own pictures on there, and um, we've been uh, remiss at doing that. So we'll try to get some club photos on there. Good. For my district, I just sat down for a couple of hours, and I just made a whole whack of them all at once. Mm. I used the same size for all of them and just made like i think it was about 50. yeah we put them all into the uh, media library for our district secretary and then she can just pull from that okay. Um, okay there are i mean obviously you want to use your own as well but you can also use a few of the free photo um options out there so pexels p-e-x-e-l-s dot mm -hmm. com is one Unsplashed is another. Um, some people have Canva uh, accounts. Canva also has free stock photography you can use. Good, yeah. Um, so yeah, you can get some really good generic like globe or just people working or all that kind of stuff that kind of fits into the mix quite well. What was that second one? Un uh, Unsplashed. Okay. And then Canva. I got Canva. I'm using that now. Okay, good. That'll give me something to go on. And of course, you have the brand center at Rotary as well. So you've yeah. got all of those kind of um, people of action photos in there that you can use too. Yeah. Yep. Um, never, ever, ever go on Google Images and just grab an image from there okay. and use it on your site. <laughs> um, copyright police will come and find you. Um, and they're, they're not great about recognizing charities and service clubs. So. Just don't do that. Make sure that you've got permission to use whatever you're using. 
we, we can vouch for that because they hit us this year. We had to crack out 300 bucks. And that's cheap. Yeah, most of them I've seen are a couple thousand is what they first go after you for. Yep. So yeah, it exists. It's bad that it exists. Good, 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 good. Well, I got some work to do on those photos. That, that'll give me something to do in my leisure time. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing is you can throw on a TV show and just plug away because it's pretty yeah. much. Yeah, exactly. So I owe I owe Yosef uh, some answers on our. I, I'm going to try to put some forms together for Yosef so we can put that together for our uh, club speakers. Very good. Yeah. And for Virginia, I've got a couple of things I can now use for source to maybe fix up uh, the last uh, 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 member session we had. Grow Rotary. We can add a few things that we don't normally add to that page. Uh, and that will be, uh, we usually just have the video of the mm. Grow Rotary as, as, as a standalone. Mm -hmm. We have to rearrange that whole section so we can add some files and things like that. So there's a few tricks that you've shown me today that I never saw before either. So I appreciate that very much. Oh, no problem. Yeah, we've got a video. We'll, we'll add a bit to that section right there where you said, come join us, do the good. We use that particular video because that covers about 15 clubs of what they've done in uh, certainly uh, not in the most recent time, but it does show a lot of clubs and a lot of different activities in that one spot. So, Perfect. Uh, and you know how to limit the events just to be a small amount, right? Uh, help me out on that one. Yeah, limit the okay. events. Good idea. So we're on the homepage, right? So we need yeah. to go new yeah. website beta, homepage designer. And we're going to mouse over the event module here. All right. So here we have it, mouse yep. over it, and we yep. get a gear in the top. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So from that gear, we can then limit the number of items to display. Gotcha. And then maybe something more that finishes where that video is. So it'll take us a little bit of trial and error probably to find that sweet spot. What I try to do is put about, what I try to do right now is put in this month and next month. So I'll, I'll, I can do that now a little bit better. Right. Okay. So there we go. We've got it pretty close. And then of course, if they want all the other events, they can click the view calendar to get everything. So Good. Good. I do that with the scrolling stories that we have too. I limit that right now to 11. I right. try to keep it to less if I can, but right now there seems to be 11 stories that we want to put that people can scroll and see. Makes sense. And I update that probably once a week because those stories as they become stale can come off and new ones can be added. There you go. Yep, so we're doing that. Okay, good. And while I'm here, do you want the um, this to come off now as well? The training program and refresh stuff? No, because we, will, we still have four or five that we could actually put a rebate to. And as more clubs see it, more clubs will get involved, okay? Okay. Yeah, so we, we have like, to discuss that because I've got a few waiting in the wings now that I'm not quite sure whether to go forward or not. So, DG Ron, we want to keep going on that, don't we? We want to keep going on it. Plus, uh, I believe Yosef wants to uh, carry the forward program into next year so okay. that we try and capture the balance of our clubs. Okay. You've got, you've got what, 40 clubs at least now from 7090 that are on the program? Oh, 55. There you oh. go. The okay, so out of 61 and I think we're probably down to more like 59 clubs total because a few amalgamated but yeah it was most nice so and yeah, we like to get there too I think that's the, our, our goal so okay. we're we're about halfway there a little less than halfway so we want we want to keep pushing that too and, and keep you busy too <laughs> okay awesome <laughs> sounds good all right well I'm training Asian Court tonight so good. that was a, a club that really didn't have a website before oh so. that's right that's so right. there. Um, Melissa, if you're talking to Agent Court tonight, remind them to put a president for pets training. They don't have one yet. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> and so if, you, if you're trading them, just say, listen, you, I'm glad to train you, but don't forget the sixth thing is pets. <laughs> you. And you haven't done it yet. And Richard, you too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Busted. Yeah, I'm sure Gil will be the first one to sign on. So I will mention that. <laughs> Thank you. Go I'll, I'll reach out to them as well. The good news is, as we said, this was being recorded. So we can go back and look at this oh. and look at all the things that Melissa showed us today. If we forget how to do a certain thing, we can go back and just see that particular piece of it too. So I appreciate that very much. 
That's for sure. Yeah, so I'll be sending that to you via WeTransfer. Um, so yeah. you can you know, send it all around. Actually, yeah. I do have everybody on an email chain. So maybe I'll just send it to a whole bunch. Yeah, okay. Um, and we'll do is and, it on the YouTube channel. Okay, and I always do kind of the same basic structure. So the home pages first, then the content pages, then the stories, then the events. So you can skip forward <laughs> to yes, kind of roughly point. where you want to be. So. Good point. Is there anything else anybody's got? Any other questions? Lots in the chat there. Okay. Well, just oh one question. I think next year, because of the Rotaract clubs coming in, oh, yes, uh, they'll probably need websites, uh, hopefully. Um, and I'm not sure. Anyway, I guess we have some discussions to do to 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 talk about. Um, where we, and that would be that kind of fall into the refresh program, I think, as well. Hopefully, I, I think Yosef, when we're setting our budget up tomorrow, we need to give thought to making sure we have enough budget capacity to do that. Okay, um, which which we can do, um, and we just need to think how we're going to bring the Rotaract clubs into it. Um, are they going to all be at the same time? Are they going to be individual sessions? Because that does make a cost difference. Okay, well, so what what have you got there? Mary Lou's made a very good point. Uh, we don't. They'll use Club Runner. Um, it really depends. They may want to just go with Facebook groups, Instagram, that sort of a thing. Well, probably not Facebook because you know young people don't do that anymore. But um, <laughs> this is the uh, umbrella Rotaract site that we created for 7090. And then each of the individual clubs have a listing on it of basically mm -hmm. when they meet, what they do, and who to contact and stuff like that. This is Club Runner. Obviously, it's linked to the district site and the um, uh, PR team for the Rotaract um, clubs in the district was trained on how to update it. So she does it and goes crazy on it. So um, this is obviously an option. Club Runner is probably too expensive for each of the clubs to have. Um, so yeah. this kind of fills in that void of they can have a presence. And then if they just want to do their regular stuff on Instagram, then they can do that, but they've still got a, a, a good internet presence that's open to the public in this way, but it's cheaper because everybody's covered under one umbrella. So the district yeah. paid for that uh, yeah. website on Club Runner. Yep, and they did it under the redesign project as well. Okay, there you go, Yusuf, there's a thought. That's, that's there's a good idea. Yeah. Go. Yep. I like that. Um, just a, a comment. A lot of the Rotaract clubs do have a presence, but it's not Club Runner. Like they have a a page that you can go and find out, you know, what they're doing. Uh, I'm not sure what the platform is for, and that pro it probably varies. WordPress is probably the most accessible and cheapest for a lot of them, because if you get just a, a WordPress.org account, you can, it's free and you can kind of throw stuff up there. It's fairly intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, and they can certainly do that. that that's great. Uh, just try to encourage them to stay on brand standard as much as possible. That tends to be where they kind of go a little wingy. But yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, and always remind them about photography. So not just using stuff from Google, but also whoever the people are, because you can be dealing with underage people when you're posting mm -hmm. your Rotaract sites, just to be mindful that they have permission and all that, that good stuff. Okay. Melissa, did you originally... Uh create a Rotaract page on your own district website before that? Yes. For Rotaractors. Yep. Mm -hmm. Strictly for so there's a thought we could do too, keeping our price down, our cost down, not setting up a brand new page like this, but setting up a page on our website and then they could actually add to that. Yeah, and we still have it as a lead in to go here as yeah. well. That okay, page. good. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Anybody else? Well, thank well, these, you. These are all good ideas. I just think we have to be careful not to back up or apologize for Club Runner because that is the platform we've confirmed for our district. And anything we do aside from that just doubles up on our work, which oh. isn't, isn't fair to us. So I think we have to promote Club Runner. Definitely use ideas like we just talked about to make it easy for the Rotaractors to uh, 
to be able to be part of it, uh, but continue to promote our clubs to be there. Um, we've already seen clubs like East York get back onto Club Runner because of the work that Melissa has done here for us. So let's keep the good stuff going. Melissa, thank you for everything you've done for our district this year. Um, let, let's, uh, let's build a bigger and better Club Runner. Yeah, for sure. Um, Thank and you, the integration is something that is really important to mention to them that the club runner sites talk to each other. So if it's as simple as, you know, pushing events back and forth or bigger, like knowing what membership is, it is a benefit of having it. So. Oh, any update on the event? Speaking of events, um, if we have a district event, is there any update on how we can copy that down to our club website? No. Yes or no on that? No, still no? I will ask. No, I haven't uh, heard anything on that. Uh, actually, Melissa. Yes. So the last information we had was that, um, so in the, in the listing for Club Runner, mm -hmm. uh, maybe I don't have this right. Yosef, you might have to remind me. The Club Runner didn't have any plans for the Rotaract Clubs. No. Listing them. I think Bob tried to list them. Bob is the one who tried to list them somewhere and, and register them because we don't have anywhere where we would capture them at this point, as far as I know. Yeah, the problem was is that in club we can in we can put club information in Club Runner and it gets um it gets um forced up or whatever. Right, right, right. Up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Post it up. Up to uh Rotary, up, up to, to RI. Yeah, to RI. And we don't have that. Their club runner doesn't have that on the radar right now for Rotaract clubs. Well, keep, keep in mind that whether it did or didn't, it's got nowhere to go. Right. Like, until Rotary International sets mm -hmm. up the members in Rotaract is the, is the only place it's got a landing point to go to. So it's kind of chicken or the egg. Okay. So at this point, we need to do what we can do as a district to help them be organized. And Bob's done a great job on, on our end with that. But RI's got to figure out the landing part first okay. before we can, and it's not just us, it's every other thing like Club Runner that we use around the world that it would have the same problem. Okay. Yeah. Thank and the other, data, the other databases too, DA, DACB and all those other ones too, it must be in the same position. Yeah, Mary Lou, you're absolutely correct. And you're thinking what we're all thinking, but uh, until they get the council on legislation and a bunch of things passed, um, there's, there's a whole bunch of technicalities in front of us that nobody wants to hear about, but it's gonna take us uh, probably right until the 11th hour before some of it gets resolved. How about, how about the uh, 36th hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was on an IA call last night and uh, one of the districts in, in India, they have about 128 clubs, rotary clubs, and 100 rotaract clubs. Wow. So that's exciting. I know, but how do you bring all that Great. 100 over? Now? I'll just stick with the it's Friday, that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. So, but I do like the I do like that page that you created the, yes. for the Rotaract clubs for your district, Melissa, because I think that's at least a step to you know that people in the district can say see them. Yeah. I'll yeah. take a look at that. I'll take a look at that website, Melissa, and see if we can create a page that's that that uh, can mirror that. And that being maybe a very good start. Yep, for sure. Well, right. you can use some fun colors for Rotor Rotor Act because they use well, <laughs> get you away from the blue for just a little bit. <laughs> Everybody's okay with the colors we have on our current website. Yeah, That's good. Fine. Thank you, Melissa, for that. Done a great job. That was that was a quick uh, yes from Ron, myself, and Mary Lou once upon a time, I think, and we just said, yeah, go with this and see what happens. So. <laughs> Yeah, we're there. Thank it's you. pretty easy to change and adjust on the fly. If you find, yeah. you know, in a few months, you're getting bored with it. You can always change it. <laughs> very good. Well, thanks again so much. You're very thank welcome. You. So thank if you, any Melissa. of you have any questions, just don't hesitate to reach out. Um, but I hope you all have a wonderful weekend.
Appreciate that. Thank you. We'll keep this Thank project you, going for sure. Yeah. We're going to keep on Thank you, Melissa. We're going to have to annex your Rotary Club to 7070. <laughs> That's right, <yeah. laughs> I got lots of friends down at Well. Just tell me if you get up early in the morning. That's, that's all I ask. <laughs> we, we only have to, Ron, we only have to change one number. That's all. Exactly. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> that's great. Thanks a million, everybody. All right. Have a great Take day. Care, Thank, you, Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Have, have a good a great weekend. Day. Ciao.